Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bada habita fillah Continue on in our study of the three ways of forgiveness by Imam Al-Hafid Ibn Rajib Al-Hanbali Rahimahullah Ta'ala Rahmatan Wasi'ah And it was a study of his uh, explanation of a hadith and then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which was a hadith of Qudsi where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said as the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam uh, narrated O son of Adam as long as you call upon me and hope in me I will forgive you for whatever sins you have and I will not mind. So Imam uh, Ibn Rajib refer to three ways of forgiveness that can be obtained or that we know and understand from this hadith. And we spoke a little bit about the first way. He mentioned the hopeful supplication. Supplication meaning a dua. Like as the Prophet ﷺ said, a dua huwa ibadah. That supplication, dua, is worship. And we talked about some of the evidences or Imam Ibn Rajab did we related what he said and we left off in the treaties where he said <clears throat> he mentioned an ayah about this first way of forgiveness which is supplication one of the first ways of receiving forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a dua supplication so Imam Ibn Rajab said that Allah the Almighty says wad'uhu khawfan wa tama'an inna rahmatullahi Qareeban min al muhsineen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al kareem and call upon him in fear and hope for sure the mercy of Allah is near to those who do good Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and call upon him meaning call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in fear and hope for sure the mercy of Allah is near to those who do good very important that the believer, <clears throat> when they supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hoping for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you have certainty that Allah will answer your dua. And you supplicate hoping for his mercy. And fearing what? Fearing his punishment, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the difference between Ahl Sunnah and many of the groups of Ahl Bid'ah. For example, the Khawarij. The Khawarij was an early group in Islam. And they believed that the believer either had full Iman, 100% Iman, with no mistakes, or if they committed a sin, then they were disbelievers, they were kafir, they made takfir of them. They are the first takfiris, they are called the khawarij. And we still have some uh, people who have this belief or something similar to this belief today. <clears throat> so they believed they had too much fear they only emphasize fear. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and call upon him in fear and hope. Allah orders us to call upon him in fear and hope. Al-Amr yafid al wujub meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us so that it's an obligation. If Allah tells us to do something, that means we have to do it. It's an obligation. It's wajib. That's the asl. That means that's the, the, the main point of that command or the origin of that command is that we have to fulfill it. So the Khawarij, they had fear, uh, extreme fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they had no hope for his mercy because they believed the major sinner would go in the hellfire forever. And they made tech fear of them, said they were disbelievers. If you drink alcohol, you're a disbeliever to them. If you smoke weed, you're a disbeliever to them. If you uh, commit zina or fornication, you're a disbeliever to them. If you disobey <coughs> your parents, your mother, curse your mother, fight your mother, curse your father. You're a disbeliever to the Khawarij because those are major sins. Those are some of the major sins. So they believe they had no, uh, they only had fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment. They only believed in having the fear. They didn't have the hope for his mercy. Then you had another group of people amongst the Muslims, some of them, who hoped, who had too much into hope for Allah's mercy, that they do every sin and they say, you know, Allah is forgiving. They drink, they smoke, they fight, they kill, and they say, no, I'm a full believer. 
This group of people, they were called the Murgia. Murgia, because they took out, they believed that deeds, your deeds, were not from your Iman. And deeds to Ahlul Sunnah are uh, belief in your heart. This is what we believe Iman is in Islam. Belief in the heart, deeds that you do with your, your, your uh, actions you do with your hands, you know, the actions, and uh, statements of the tongue. And I'll give you a quick example of each, and then we'll get back into the treaties. So, for example, to Ahlul Sunnah, we believe that the Salat, which Salat is physical, Allahu Akbar, we make takbir, takbir into ihram. This is using, uh, we do physical, the Salat is physical. Also, the Salat involves your heart. That you, you make your ibadah with, ikh, uh, with ikhlas lillah, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, the Salat has dhikr on your tongue. That you re recite the Fatiha. You recite when you come up, when you're in uh, sujood. When you come up from, uh, when you come up uh, from a rukur. All of this has dhikr in it. So, the dhikr is of your tongue. That means all of those things is your Iman. Iman is not just in your heart. Iman is in your heart. It's your actions you do. And it's your statements of the tongue. All of that is iman. Iman. If you make dhikr to Allah, subhanallah, walhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, this is dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's part of your iman, and it's on your tongue. If you remove something harmful that's on the road, or for example, we have water on the floor, you clean it up so no one else falls. That's a part of iman. You do that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're getting edger for it. That's a part of your iman. And likewise, in your heart, the belief you have is a part of your iman. All of those things are make up your iman. And ah, that's the belief of Ahl Sunnah, which differs with those other groups and sects. And those who... So Ahl Sunnah believes what? That when we supplicate to Allah, that we fear His punishment, and we hope for His mercy, and we hope that it's accepted, uh, our dua is accepted. Imam Ibn Rajab said... So long as a servant persists in calling to Allah, aspiring for a certain response without losing hope, then he is close to getting his response. Whoever consistently, consistently knocks on the door will eventually have it open for him. SubhanAllah, he made a nice, um, what do you call it, analogy. And he said, so long as a servant, so as long as you keep supplicating to Allah, Allah's going to open it. As long as you hope, you don't have any, you don't lose hope. You hope that Allah's going to answer it. You believe Allah's going to answer it. You hope for Allah's mercy, and you fear His punishment as much as you can. Have taqwa. Then Allah's going to answer your du'a either in this life or either in the hereafter, as the Prophet wasallam said. Also, or either that He will keep a calamity or keep something harmful from harming you. So dua is very important. Dua is ibadah. Dua is ibadah. It's very important to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the imam said, one of the most important things a servant could ask his Lord for is the forgiveness of his sins. That implies being saved from the fire and entering paradise. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Hawlaha Nudan dinu. The Prophet said, In general, it is about the uh, fire and paradise that we constantly supplicate for. That's the meaning. And Abu Muslim al Khulani said, I never made a supplication that I mentioned the fire except that I, ending up, I ended up making it totally for seeking protection from it. Meaning he never made du'a any related to the hellfire at all except that he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be protected from that hellfire. One way that Allah is merciful towards a servant is that whenever a servant calls on him seeking help with any of his needs of, the world, of this world, Allah assists him with it and exchanges it for something better. He may, as a response to his call, either prevent some harm from befalling the person save the response and reward for him in the hereafter, or Allah may forgive one of his sins as a reward for his supplication. Imam Ahmed records in Al-Musnid, a hadith of uh, Abi Sa'id al-Khudri, uh, that the Prophet said, 
ma min muslim yad'u bi da'watin laysa fiha ithmun wala qati wala qati'atu rahim illa atahu Allah biha ihda thalath amma an taj'ala lahu da'watuhu wa imma an yudakhiruha lahu fil akhira wa imma an yasrifa anhu min as-su'i mithlaha beautiful hadith and this is what i was just talking about so now we're getting the the statement of the imam and he's given us the hadith which is in a uh, Muslim Imam Ahmed. So he said, the Prophet said, No Muslim supplicates for anything as long as it does not pertain to anything sinful or cutting off the ties of kinship, except that Allah will give him as a reward for it one of three things. One of three things. Either Allah will immediately respond to a supplication, or he will save the person's reward for him in the hereafter. Or Allah will prevent a similar evil from befalling him. So I think that's clear. When you supplicate, one of those three things will happen if you believe in Allah and you fear Allah as much as possible. Either he's going to answer your dua soon, uh, you know, in this life, or he's going to give you the reward in, in the hereafter, or he's going to give you some forgiveness and protect you from a punishment or something that was going to happen to you. So you never lose with dua. A dua who are ibadah. The companions عنه, then said, in that case, we will increase in supplication. The Prophet وسلم, said, Allahu Akhtar. He said, Allah will increase even more. Allahu Akhtar. Allah will increase even more. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase, you know, give you more, uh, you know, answering to your supplication. So this is glad tidings from the Prophet In any case, persistence and diligence and supplicating for forgiveness while hoping in Allah is the way to attain forgiveness. If you want to be forgiven, supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often. That's one way to get forgiven. Another excellent way to get this forgiveness is that whenever a servant commits a sin, he neither seeks nor hopes for anyone's forgiveness other than from his Lord. He knows that no one forgives sins or takes people to account for them other than Allah So even if you make a mistake with someone, of course you want their forgiveness, but true forgiveness, the spiritual forgiveness that can only repentance and, and, and istighfar is made to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. This comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And as we mentioned, if the haq or the right of someone, you took some, something from someone, you should say, you know, I'm sorry for what I did, please forgive me. But your ultimate forgiveness, the, the ibadah, the spiritual forgiveness to get, per, get forgiven in the hereafter is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? So then he said, in any case, persistence and diligence and supplicating for forgiveness while hoping in Allah is the way to obtain forgiveness. Another excellent way to get this forgiveness is that whenever a servant, servant commits a sin, he neither seeks nor hopes for anyone's forgiveness other than from his Lord. He knows that no one forgives sins or takes people to account for them other than Allah Azza wa Jal. As for the statement in the, in the main hadith, as long as you call on me and hope in me, I will forgive you for whatever sins you have and I will not mind. So this is a statement from the hadith. Imam Ibn Rajab, he said, this means no matter how numerous your sins and bad your deeds may be, Forgiving you is not something too great for me, and I will not consider it too much. Meaning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives everything. He can forgive anything you do, anything you make a mistake with. Even if sometimes people can't forgive you. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Kitab al Kareem, In the Allah la yaghfiru an yushirka bi, wa yaghfiru ma duni thalik limay yasha. Verily, Allah does not forgive that you make shirk with Him. Meaning you make shirk with him and you die upon that shirk. And some of the, uh, the ulama, the muhaqqiqin, they, they say that this is the, ma the major shirk. If you die on the major shirk, this is kufr, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't forgive you. Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka li. Wa yaghfiru ma duna thalik li yasha. And he forgives other than that for whatever he pleases. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all your sins. Everything you do. 
but you need to come back to him. You need to supplicate to him and do your best to stay away from the major sins. <clears throat> and then the Imam said, as recorded in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet said, <clears throat> the Prophet said, Allah said, when any one of you supplicates, he should not say, O oh Allah, forgive me if you want. But he should be resolved and certain in his request and increase his hope and enthusiasm because Allah, nothing is too great for him to give. So nothing is too big for Allah. So we never say, O oh Allah, please forgive me, inshallah. O oh Allah, please give me a new car, inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. La, we don't say, oh Allah, please, uh, we don't supplicate to Allah, make dua, and then say, inshallah, or if you will. We don't say that. We make dua with certainty, oh Allah, please forgive me. Oh Allah, increase my risk. Oh Allah, bless me with khair in my life. Bless my family. Forgive my family. Forgive me. Forgive the Muslims in general. Ya Rabbil Alameen. So we make supplication in general, but we don't say, if you will, or uh, if you want, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't say that to Allah. Then Imam Ibn Rajab said, So regardless of how great and numerous a servant's sins may be, the pardon and forgiveness of Allah is certainly greater. Such sins are completely insignificant when compared to Allah's forgiveness and pardon. Someone said in poetry form, Ya Rabbi, in adham, uh, either, uh, in adhummat, ذنوبي كثيرة فلقد علمت بأن أفوك أعظم إن كان لا يرجوك إلا محسن فمن ذا الذي يدعو ويرجو مجرم ما لي إليك وسيلة وسيلة إلا رجاء وجميل عفوك ثم إني مسلم uh, in this piece of uh, Arabic poetry, which means, My Lord, when my sins become numerous, but I have already known your pardon is greater, if it is only the good doer who has hope in you, then upon whom would the sinner call in hope? I have no way to you except by hope and the magnificence of your forgiveness than the, the fact that I am a Muslim. And there's a lot of benefit in that, showing that this is Tawheed, that your supplication, your dua is worship, that it goes only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for pardon, and His pardon and His mercy and His favor is the greatest. And not only is that for the people who are good people and who do, who do little sins, but for even for us who do many sins, that we still have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and favor. And that our only way is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our only way and the only one we supplicate to and we seek that forgiveness from, it's only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and forgive us of our many sins. And until the next time, and anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Muhammad.